Good afternoon. Good evening, my family. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the mental house with me, your illustrious host, Khadija. I've had a busy week, a long week, um, and uh, it's been very challenging. But um, as we say, keeping hot hands on the plow, and keep it moving. My brother's trial was supposed to start on Monday, so, you know, I'm having these emotional ups and downs, ups and downs. So the moment I get ready to face his uh, accuser and his killer, um, because of the COVID situation, you know, it's continuously being postponed, set back, all types of delays that are, you know, very much uh, playing on my anxiety. So coupled with my mother bringing uh, challenges, as y'all know, my mother is in, um, you know, one of the last stages of dementia. And um, that is very challenging for us as well. So between the two of them, it's amazing how when I sing, all of her reality changes. And um, I want to speak about it without getting real emotional. So I think I'm going to wait for another time to, to do that. But it's been a challenging week. And I decided, nevertheless, this mental stuff still got to be talked about, and this meal, this I mean, this mental health stuff still got to be dealt with because every day you see us as a society, members of society, just deteriorating very much so, and people are not acknowledging that there is a serious mental health problem. In these here United States, we have been so traumatized, traumatized as a nation, especially here in America. And a lot of pe- people think that it, the trauma has to have happened to you directly. Well, that's probably the most severe form of trauma. But even hearing of the trauma has the ability to put you in trauma. So it's really a pain body that is almost contagious, that allows people to feel each other's pain because we're all human and we all (laughs) want and do the same thing regardless of what some will try to tell you. I try to follow the laws of the universe. I know that if I pay my electric bill that the lights will turn on for me regardless of if I'm black or white. I try to stick to those principles and things that I know to be true. And that's what keeps me grounded somewhat. Because when you're dealing in a world where prejudice is, I won't even say prejudice, I will say racism and oppression run amok, then sometimes it's hard to see a reality and the beauty unless you make it. So that's how I kind of govern my 
everyday life. So with this story here, I think that a lot of people was very angry, and they still are, and they have every right to be, with Nicole Linton, who plowed through the intersection over there in Los Angeles, and, you know, she's charged with six counts of murder for that fiery August crash. Uh, when was that? August 4th? And it killed five people. The nurse, the traveling nurse from Houston, Texas, appeared in court on yesterday in great prison scrubs and in a wheelchair due to her broken foot and a broken wrist. I don't know one person in their right mind, any sane and rational human being, would not think that there is a problem with this woman that would do something so ludicrous. There has to be an explanation. There has to be a history of mental and emotional breakdowns in order for a person to just heed themselves in harm's way and everybody else. Anybody that she didn't care. Okay. So anybody that does that, you already know they have to be not dealing with a full debt or lights on nobody home at that particular moment, that, that, that particular day, they were in a crisis. The nurse accused, and I might be, please don't get me wrong. I might make it any excuses for her because my heart goes out to the, all the people that she killed, including the pregnant woman and her infant child. Okay, so I'm not in any way making excuses for um, uh, Nicole. I'm not doing that. What I am trying to convey is that the mental, the mentals of us as a society and as individuals have to constantly be checked. Our thumbs got to stay on the pulse of our own mental capacity to keep, you know, ourselves aligned to whether we having a mental breakdown or not. This woman drove her red or red light at 90 miles an hour and slammed into other cars at a busy intersection in Los Angeles. Okay. Now, she was a traveling nurse, of course, from Houston. Uh, the DDA added that she wanted to look into reports that Lennon had been prescribed medication for her mental health issues, but that she had voluntarily stop taking it. Okay? They also want needed more time to investigate her mental health episodes before any of these prior incidents that she may have been involved in. Linton's attorney, Colleen Diahina, objected to the motion to continue her application for bail to on the court this further delay holding her in custody is a continuing violation of her rights. I don't know if I agree with that, but jail time and being in a mental facility is two different things. And I think that if you are interested in getting healing and the better of this program, she should be in the facility that better meets her needs. And being in jail is not one of them. She needs to be in a mental, she needs to be in a hospital, a mental hospital, where she is not a leave. And if you have to say the criminal, insane, whatever, fine. But I just don't think that she can adequately get help and the help that she needs in any kind of uh, prison system. And I know a lot of y'all disagree with me, and that's fine because I really want to hear your opinions and keep the dialogue going. You know, she had no drugs or alcohol in her system, in case any y'all wondering about that. And she's got no criminal record. The woman is a nurse. Okay. Now, he urged the court to release her to a psychiatric care facility. I See, that's what I, I suggest. Well, 
and the uh, DA counteracted and de vehemently deposing that defense, saying that she decided willfully to get into that vehicle, resulting in the murder of six innocent people. You know, why is it hard for people to believe that two things can be true at the very same time? Like yin and yang. So, Judge Victoria Wilson granted the DA's motion to continue the bail hearing uh, September 12th, telling the court that she had a good cause to grant the people's motion. Uh, that's the day that they postponed my brother's trial to the 12th of September. Wow. And that crash was uh, you know, it's nothing like you see in the movies. This was real life. And uh, my heart goes out to each and every one of those persons that were on the receiving end of her madness. Earlier, the prosecutors had filed a written statement from the UCLA doctor, William Winter, who examined, who examined her two days after the devastating incident and said she had an apparent lack of consciousness at the time of crash. She has no recollection of the events that led to her collision. The next thing she recalled was lying on the pavement and seeing her car on fire. Listen, y'all know somebody that does something is crazy. Has got to be it's crazy themselves. And I hate to use that term, but it's just that simple. So, like I said, I'm going to keep an eye on this because... She really needs to be, and she's a very young woman. <clears throat> and I don't think putting her in prison for the rest of her life is going to resolve that. I think that someplace that she can get the medication and the treatment that she needs will better serve her and the society. I don't know what y'all think, because that's just my opinion. And, um, it's a sad situation all the way around. So, if you like what you hear, please subscribe and share the channel. And I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.